Hello, this is Free Name on YouTube. I'm going to try and open up this BT EE Smart Hub SH20A so that you don't have to. I also suspect this is going to be surprisingly difficult to open up. So, a lot of this video is going to be fast forwarded. The interesting thing here on the underside is these weird little plastic tabs that are movable. Moving these tabs on their own and pulling on stuff doesn't really appear to do anything. Oh, I say that didn't appear to do anything when I was trying it the other day, although that worked quite successfully just then. Let's see if I can turn. Oh, I'm already at the max brightness, so uh, sorry if this isn't bright enough for you. So that is the stand removed from the underside. There's two standard screws there. Like they're quite long screws. And there's one. There is the other one. How easily is the rest of this case going to come to bits? No other obvious screws anywhere. There are two little notches here, which I suspect. Still not just opening up in the way I'd hope, but if there's anything like the old BT hubs, they, uh, they definitely don't just ping open anyway. They're very, very well designed to stay closed. Aha! I think I see what needs to be done. Down there are more... Yeah, there we go. Hidden plastic tabs down the sides of ventilation. Can't seem to find the ones on that side. There definitely is one. There we go. So there's probably more further down as well. Yeah, so about there on these vents. Let's see, that's that side done. Let's move over to the other side. And it is not visible on those. Oh, yeah, no, it is. It's just a blending in very well. Uh -huh. I'm not sure there's many more I can undo. Uh, there are tabs along this top bit here. That one there. going to move the light a little bit. Yeah, there is another tab here. That's now undone, so one more tab in the middle. We're done. It's open. So the light guide at the back doesn't have um, any BT or EE logo in it. It is just a bit of plastic and a diffuser so the light has to go around the edge, it can't go straight through the middle there. And if I hold it up to the light that makes it even more clear that that is just a, a solid bit of plastic at the back of that EE shaped logo. 
So my query here is, is it the same as this router? If we look at the back of the new router, mm, millimeter for millimeter, everything is in the same place. Also, this new smart hub doesn't do Wi-Fi 6, and it also doesn't do WPA3. So it's almost like, why did they release a new router when it doesn't really do anything better or new? They've gone for a fancy new case, everyone will think it's better, but to me, it seems very much the same spec as the old router. So. I want to see whether it's exactly the same as the insides of this, whatever this is, Smart Hub 2, in this style case. I think the circuit board might be exactly the same. Apparently there is a new Pro or uh, Plus version of this new designed Smart Hub, uh, which does do IP, uh, IPv6, uh, does do... Um, Wi-Fi 6 and may do WPA3, but it seems really strange that in this time when Wi-Fi 6 is pretty standard, that they don't give that out to all of the all of their normal, basic, you know, lowest plan customers. Very strange. Okay, here comes the answer to the question of whether this BT hub is the same as this BT Smart Hub. That is the front of the old one. And this is the new one. It looks suspiciously the same. Immediately, I can't really see much difference at all. Um, what do we have written on these labels? So on the old one, we've got 091300 as the model number. And on this one, we've got 112133 as a model number. Exactly the same heat sink or RF shield, same layout of components, I'd really need to get two photos and line them up and then flip between them to see if I can see any really obvious differences, I can't see any so far, and all the silk screen kind of printing is the same. The, air, <clears throat> the aerial design here is the same. The WPS button and light. Ha! That's an interesting one. So the old design uh, BT Hub had a WPS button, but no light pipe to show that you had pressed it. So you press this and actually inside the case an LED would come on to say you pressed it but the button is solid and you'd never know that you'd, uh, you'd triggered it. <laughs> That's a weird design. And same holes here. And that's really weak if uh, there's no difference except a different case that it's in, which would also explain why the web interface looks very much the same, if not identical, to the, uh, the old smart hubs. Is that all I need to do to get that out? Let's find out looking good. Let's do those same three screws over on the new smart hub. So this is the one that they send out to customers in October 2023 um, to EE customers and possibly to recontracting uh, 
BT customers. Also, if um, you haven't already discovered, there's several other videos about this router on uh, my channel, all of which will be linked to in the description of this video. So uh, if you want to see uh, unboxing of this router, not unboxing of the circuit board, but unboxing from its retail packaging, uh, or if you want to know how to factory reset it, then have a look through the video links. Let's have a look at the underside of or the backside of the router and see what's within both. And get rid of the cases because you don't really need those. Oh, actually, no, I might need to because I might forget which one's the new one. And we play another game of spot the difference, which at the moment I can't see much difference. Same choke maybe or transformer same fuse which i think that's what that is same probably capacitor ah a difference there's a difference the old router has probably a relay there let me see if i can see what the uh, screen printing next to it says K30, so nope, don't know what that is. But there is a component which exists on this old router, which does not exist here on this new router. Can I spot any other changes? Nothing so far. Different model of capacitor or brand of capacitor. Otherwise, everything looks identical. answered my curiosity I've now got to put these back together so that uh, they can be used again hopefully this video has been helpful to you or interesting to you if it has it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my youtube channel you don't need to have the video notifications switched on but the subscriber numbers really do help thanks very much something I noticed just now is all of this impressive looking ventilation on the front of this stand so all of these holes here, except for maybe these ones at the back and the ones on the underside, all of this stuff at the front is irrelevant. It doesn't do anything to do with airflow at all. If you look here, there's nowhere for the air to go in. There's these things here, but those are where these lugs go in when you put it in on the, on the stand. So the only things that are doing anything are these ones on the underside, where the air can potentially go up. These. And then maybe a few of these ones at the back, where they can go onto here. But, yeah, where initially, and in my first look video, I'm like, it's got an impressive amount of ventilation. Mm. It doesn't really have as much ventilation as you think.